Welcome back to D20 Tactics. On this channel, I play Dungeons & Dragons with my friends, and we explore combat scenarios and play out the tactics used to defeat monsters quickly and safely, giving you more time to get back to roleplaying. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Stars and Zero, and today I'm joined by Fear No Equal, Asia Wolf, Merrick of War, and Blind Oracle. Together we'll run through typical battles that adventurers might see playing Dungeons & Dragons. Whether you're a new player trying to gain experience and level up your game, a seasoned fighter who's looking to learn some new tricks and maintain your edge, or a dungeon master who wants to get the most challenge out of your monsters, join us as we slice and dice our way through Monsters and Mayhem and evaluate the tactics that decides who makes it onto the boss fight and who's going to be reaching for a fresh character sheet. In this series, the players are controlling characters straight out of the starter set. I'm Fear No Equal and I'm playing the level 16 human fighter. I'm Major Wolf and I'm playing the wizard. I'm Blind Orc and I'm playing the rope. I'm Eric of War and I'm playing the cleric. At level 16, our daring adventurers are stopping a demonic incursion. They'll have to face six encounters all based on this theme before they get a long rest and level up to level 17. This is the 16th dungeon in the starter set series, so if you missed the start, you can find a link to it in the description below. Let's review what the players have at the start of the dungeon. New to the arsenal of spells is the power word stun. It's pretty much business as usual. Key magic items include a plus two short bow, 60 plus one arrows, still impersonating a wizard courtesy of the Fuklukan Bandor, a potion of invisibility, a potion of flying. I am carrying a plus two great axe as my trusty standard weapon. We've picked up four potions of fire resistance and two immovable rods. We have a gem of brightness, several potions of various giant strength, a javelin of lightning in case we need a little ranged action. I am a cleric with your typical cleric spells. Warhammer plus the divine strike abilities is probably going to be the go-to. The litany of spells is really key features here. All the encounters use monsters straight out of the monster manual with no modifications or adjustments. Encounters are based on challenge ratings from that book. I'll control the monsters and do my best to put as many adventures in the ground as possible. As we go, we'll talk about the choices we made, why they fit the characters that the players are using, and what mistakes we made along the way. Grab your dice, draw your sword, and let's jump into combat. The adventurers have tracked down a demonic cult that had immediately fled upon their discovery. The adventurers are racing across the wasteland, pursuing the cult before they get to their final destination, whatever that might be and do whatever it is that they're trying to do. As the adventurers make landing on the back of the abyssal contraption that is hurtling through the waste on a pair of very machine-like treads, they make it to the landing on the back door. In preparation for this fight, is anybody pre-casting any spells? I am actually. I'm knocking back a potion of fire resistance. That sounds good. Rogue, are you pre-casting any spells? We're going to pre-cast fly off the band door. Sounds good, because Fly has a duration in excess of one minute. You can cast it and have it ready for the first encounter. Wizard, are you pre-casting any spells? I'm going to ritual cast my find familiar to get old Alistair Crowley out here. Cast the simulacrum spell ahead of time. Going to put mage armor on me. Hand him a scroll, and he's going to cast a scroll on himself. I think that's it. Cleric, are you pre-casting any spells? Hero's Feast, that'll be... Seven. Which 12 creatures are going to consume this feast? I believe that would be the entire party at this point. You're offering this to the cleric, wizard, rogue, and fighter. Don't forget the owl. <laughs> <laughs> if I can include the familiar, I will. It kind of surprises me it took you guys this long to figure it out. But yeah, I don't see any reason an owl can't consume a hero's feast. Simulacrum can't gain HP. There's more than just HP to gain. It seems to me that it would also be able to become immune to poison, be cured of all diseases and poisons, become immune to frighten and advantage on wisdom saves. Aid at a level four. Plus 15 hit points, to which three people are getting the aid bonus. Fighter, rogue, the wizard. Hit points, ability, speed. Spells, items in hand. 202 of 202. A great axe plus two in hand. Action surge, second wind, both indomitables, all available. I'm at 122 out of 122 hit points. Wand of the War Mage plus two in hand. Spellbook in the other hand. Arcane recovery up for first level. Three second, three third, three fourth, two fifth, one sixth, and one eighth. The simulacrum has 50 HP. Out of 50. We are holding a plus two short bow in hand using plus one arrows. A hundred and sixty-nine HP after Heroes Feast and Aid. And I have sneak dice all day on tap. Let's go. Two channel divinities, a Warhammer with a plus two shield, four level ones, three level two, three level three, two level fours, two level five, 
a level 7, and a level 8. I have 170 hit points out of 170. Monsters, abilities, items, and numbers. This encounter is a six-armed snake demon. Snake demon is a demon, as one might imagine. They have demonic resistances. True sight for 120 feet, sorry rogue. They have some resistances to magic. They have an ability called reactive, where they can take one reaction per turn of combat. Multi-attack, as you might imagine, a six-armed creature can do. They also have a tail attack that can grapple and restrain people. And they have the ability to teleport. They can also parry with those swords as one of their many, many reactions terrain and effects. A lot going on in this fight. So you guys are on top of an abyssal engine that's hurtling through the waste. If you end your turn on a yellow square, you will move backward towards the rear of the engine 10 squares, 50 feet at the end of your turn as the waste underneath you go hurtling past. If that movement pushes you under the engine, then you will take 10d6 bludgeoning damage. The Orin section, if you land on the tracks, well, you can actually run across the top of the tracks, but you have to balance yourself there with a DC 17 acrobatics check. If you fail this, you will fall prone, and there's a bunch of spikes on the tracks as well, so you're gonna take 6d6 slashing damage. And then finally, there's some red areas as well, which are just immediately dangerous. In the corners of the engine, there's a couple of flaming skulls. We'll do 6d6 fire damage. Then there's the engine compartment. Should you fall into the engine compartment, you will take a total of 6d6 fire damage as the flames of the abyss burn at you, 6d6 bludgeoning damage as the engine's gears grind against you, and just for fun, 6d6 psychic damage as the souls that power the engine scream into your mind. That's what we're looking at for terrain. Any questions? How long have you been waiting to use this? I just found it yesterday, to be honest. I've had it for a while, but I was just flipping through them and going, oh, this looks cool. It is fine if we're over the engine, but not falling in the engine. Yeah, yeah. if you try to stand in the engine, you're going to take a whole bunch of damage. If you fly over it, that's fine. Winged boots. This is the part where we need to have a brief conversation about true sight versus hiding. True sight means I can't be invisible. However, if I do find something or someone to hide behind, I'm still stealth. 100% true. Yep. They have a passive perception of 13, a maximum perception of 23, which means your minimum is above their maximum. They can never spot you unless you're using something like invisibility to hide. It's the ability to see through illusions, not the ability to see the people who are just plain hidden. Tactics in this fight. What do you guys think for tactics in this fight? We gotta burst this thing down. Obviously, because it's the only enemy, but like really cut loose on it because that's a lot of attacks that it can get to throw at us if we give it more turns than we should. Agreed. Seems reasonable. In terms of getting to it, I think I'm probably the only one who really needs to be in melee contact, so I can just go wherever because I can fly over the engine. It's going to teleport into you guys, though, because it really wants to lay on to the simulacrum with six attacks. Let's do the thing. All right, let's do the thing, then. Go ahead and roll initiative. Yeah. Tip from a seven into a 15. Jelly. I love my high initiative that I didn't used to have. Anybody beat a 20? I have a 20. Anyone have between a 20 and a 15? 18 on the fighter. Anyone got between a 15 and a 10? 15 for the wizard. 13 for the cleric. 10 for the rogue. It looks like I'm missing a owl. 10 on the owl. We're going to start off with Mary, the snake demon. Mary has a 40-foot move. She doesn't have a fly speed, and she can't fly over that. She can't jump it. She's going to back up through this door and then ready a teleport when the wizard goes. That's me. After the snake demon, we're going to go to the fighter. Can these doors be closed? Can she teleport to a location she can't see? Well, she could teleport out of the room if she could see out of the room somehow, yeah. Advance across the room to the spot just south of the door that's going to require a dash after the fighter we go to the wizard honestly i kind of want to shut the door lock me in with the snake do it pretty much i kind of just want to move forward and shut the door <laughs> object interaction to shut the door what's your action i ready chain lightning to shoot it when i see it sounds good my ready to action was after the wizard goes and i perceive the wizard going so after that happens i'm going to teleport the simulacrum will also ready chain lightning to shoot it when he sees it move up north one after the wizard is the cleric and this door is closed currently I'd like to open the door to walk through it and get into the arena. You open the door, that's your object interaction. As soon as you're done with that, Wizard and the Simulacrum can see it, which will trigger their readied actions. Go ahead and give me those. Dex DC 18. I have Magic Resistance, which gives me advantage on spell effects. 18 for the first one. 61. It dodged the chain lightning, so that will reduce it down to 30. It resists lightning, so that will reduce it down to 15. It takes 15 points of lightning damage. But you're on the board, so that's fun. Simulacrum's going to do the same thing. 
I'm going to get the exact same roll, 18 to dodge. 55 with the plus 5. That'll be half 27 as I dodge it, halved again to 13 as I resist it. Wanted to essentially start walking down towards it. I would like to cast Spiritual Weapon. If I had a hammer. Hammer on the first encounter. And we're in the second encounter. That'll be a natural 20. That'll hit. That'll be 12. That's your bonus action. Do you have an action action? And it's really a war armor strike if it gets close enough to hit. After that, we're going to go to the rogue. All right, let's start this game up. Bonus action height. 31. Move up. Object interaction to prop the door open. Take the shot. 18. 18 is what you need. 43. Then I'd like to scurry back behind the doorway. That's my turn. After the rogue, we go to the owl. Going to move in and get advantage to the fighter, please. After the owl, we go to Mary, the snake demon. Mary's going to start off with her tail attack. 26 to hit you, fighter. That will do. 12 points of bludgeoning damage. If you are medium-sized or smaller, and you are, then you are grappled with a DC 19. Until this grapple ends, you are restrained. She's now going to make her longsword attacks on you. 19. Miss. 17 to hit. Miss. The 20 should hit. Hit. 20 points of slashing damage. 24 to hit you. Hit. 9 slashing. 22 to hit you. Hit. 15 slashing. 23 to hit you. That'll hit. 15 slashing. Whatever, I'm still in triple digits. She's going to move to here, and she's going to drag you with her. After that, we're going to go to the fighter. In order to ungrapple, I have to make uh, athletics action. So you can make a acrobatics or athletics to hit a DC 19 as your action. Alternatively, grapple ends if the target is unconscious, incapacitated, or it is more than its reach away from you. I do not have disadvantage for being grappled, so let's just wail on it. You don't have disadvantage for being grappled, but you do have disadvantage for being restrained. Yeah, so I need to break that. So yeah, let's go ahead and take the action to break the grapple. 19 on the nose. 19 will do it. That's your action. What else you got? For starters, I have an action surge. First attack is with advantage because owl. 22 to hit. It will bring up one of its swords to use its parry reaction, increasing its AC to 23, blocking the attack. All right, second attack. That's going to miss. That's a 13. 25 to hit. Hits. For 17 damage. Move me west two spaces. After the fighter, we go to the wizard. Do the same thing. Object interaction, shut the door, ready magic missile for when I see the thing. Same for the simulacrum. Let's go fifth to just kind of burn it. Fifth for both of them, right? Correct. After the wizard, we're going to the clear. I'd like to move and dash up to the other side of the door. Bonus action, get the spiritual weapon next to the uh, demon. 21. Demon is going to use another one of its reactions to parry this melee attack with one of its swords. Sounds good. That'll be it. The rogue. Well, the door being shut is a bit of a problem. Bonus action hide to start. 25. 25 will do it. Object interaction costs me nothing for the first one. Yep. Let's go 7 on the diagonal, provided I can see Mary the snake demon. At some point in that line, you'll be able to see her. And then take the shot. Halfling luck triggers. 29 to hit. 29 will hit, even with a cover. For 45 points of damage. I'd like to tuck around the corner, and that is my turn. After the rogue, we go to the owl. Swoop in. Same thing, get the fighter advantage and get out. After the owl, we go to Mary. Uh, Mary's in a tough spot. She's about to get magic missiled, and I don't see any way for her to avoid it. So... Mary could skip her turn. Mary could skip her turn. That's an excellent idea. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> perhaps won't do that, but I'm about to eat 14 magic missiles. From a 10 plus of ochre. The minimum of that <laughs> is lethal, so... Oh, you know what I can do? I can go to a spot that the evoker can't see. She's going to teleport next to the road. Smart move. Hi, buddy. Yeah, that'll do that. That's an entire action, though, so I don't think it's going to much matter. After that, we go to the fighter. Fly back across to Mary's north side. Let's beat the Tara out of Mary. Goodness, that's terrible. Okay, first throw is a miss, even with advantage. Second throw, that is a crit for 22 damage. It hurts, but, you know... Here we are. Third attack. That is a 23 to hit. She will use her reaction to try to block that. Only gets it up to a 23, though. And that'll put us at 12 damage. And that is it for me. After the fighter, we go to the wizard. Wizard, that will drop both of your spells. So you've cast them, but you're unable to release them. Still gonna step out. Let's go some third levels. All magic missiles. Your dice is two. <laughs> 2 plus 1 is 3, plus 5 is 8 times 5 is 40. That's going to be 40 points of damage, which will drop the snake demon. And that's the end of the first encounter. Report hit points. 131 of 202. 122 out of 122. 170 out of 170. 169 out of 169. 
Any end of encounter actions. I'm gonna pop my second wind real fast. Total 24 HP. The next encounter is more than a minute away, less than 10 minutes away. Fly is still ticking. That's absolutely right. The adventurers have breached the back of the abyssal machine. They're gonna make their way up to the top deck to see where this thing is headed. One encounter down, five more to go before the long rest. Thank you for stopping by, and I hope you'll join us next week as the adventure continues. I'm Sarson Zero, and I will see you next time.